Good afternoon. The Mayor of London has added his voice to the growing anger after the boss of the bailed-out Royal Bank of Scotland was given a bonus of almost a million pounds. Boris Johnson said he was at a loss to justify the amount of money for the head of the most estate-owned bank. Yes, he said the bonus should have been blocked. This morning, Downing Street said the Prime Minister wasn't directly involved in the process and it was the RBS board who'd taken the final decision. Well, uh, let's uh, talk now to uh, two people uh, with opposite views on this issue. The first one, Spiro Van uh, Limmen, who's spokesperson for Occupy London Stock Exchange, and from central London by Mark Littlewood, director of the uh, Institute of Economic Affairs, uh, a pro-free market think tank. In fact, uh, Spiro Van Limmen is shortly going to uh, join us on set, so I'm going to start with you, uh, Mark. Danny Cameron said uh, that uh, reward for failure made his blood boil, and when you look at RBS his share price down 40% from 12 months ago and the fact that uh, uh, really things aren't moving in the right direction as far as the bank is concerned perhaps uh, this is reward for failure isn't it? Well we've got to be careful the rewards down because uh, RBS hasn't performed as well as it might my understanding is that the share issue that's been given to Stephen Hester is uh, tied up until 2014 so he is incentivized over the long term to deliver for RBS and I think we all agreed that we wanted to move away from looking at short term results and paying bankers on that basis rather incentivizing them for the long term and I rather like the bonus culture in the sense of don't we want to actually tie the remuneration that these people get to their eventual long term performance rather than say paying Stephen Hester two million pounds a year in salary irrespective of the outcome. Uh, if, if he and the other senior staff at RBS can get RBS in a fit state to actually float it back into the private sector at the highest share price we can imagine, that will be good for Stephen Hester and it will be good for us as taxpayers. Yeah, but I mean, he hasn't met the lending, RBS hasn't met its lending target, has it, according to Project Merlin, and that's a key point as far as Lord Oakshot is concerned. He's saying, look, you know, they haven't met this target, this should not be paid. Well, the, clearly, if he'd met every target and exceeded every target, he would have got a larger bonus. My concern is that uh, people are, if you like, just being driven by the bonus side of it. Uh, if, if he p p performed sensationally, perhaps he would have received a higher number of shares in, 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 in his bonus package. And look, most of RBS is returning to profitability. If we as taxpayers want to make sure that we rake back as much as we can after RBS was nationalised, then we want to incentivise the people running RBS. We want to make sure that we've got people at market rates. We don't want all of the top people to leave. This is a complex problem getting RBS sorted out and it is in our interest that it is run by highly professional people who are properly incentivised. Okay, so and then I, I think that actually incentivising the chief exec of RBS by tying his shares to where, they, uh, where RBS will be at in 2014 is a much more sensible long-term solution than some of this short-term panic reaction. Well, if they go up by 40%, I mean, it could be worth a lot more than just under a million pounds. It's a good aspire of Van uh, Limmen, though, who's uh, is in the studio with me now. Looking at the streamlining that's taken place in RBS, year, there's been job losses as well, but he has turned it round, hasn't he? 1.6 billion loss uh, last year to 2 billion profit. I mean, he has turned this round. He, he's entitled to a bonus. Well, I don't think so. Uh, last quarter, they actually lost uh, 700 million pounds from the uh, taxpayers. Uh, and we have to, to make sure that uh, RBS is accountable to the shareholders. The shareholders at the moment are the taxpayers. And, uh, and uh, at the moment, Mr. Hester is the, most, uh, is the best um, uh, paid public servant in the country. OK, but to be accountable to shareholders, OK, we have an 82% um, mm -hmm. stake I I in RBS. But the remuneration committee agreed by contractually within the company and by the government and passed through the UKFI as well has said okay this is justified no, it's not justified. Any reasonable human being would think, hold on a minute, I've been losing money for, uh, since 2008. I've been bailed out with uh, six, £650 billion no, but, but, but that's from the taxpayer. Me, but that's different, well, no, no, because, no, no, but let me because finish. he is meeting let the me targets as let me finish. The These bank. people, they have, no, they have no understanding of the social impact that their actions have. And every uh, reasonable human being would think, uh, hold on a minute, uh, I can certainly live and survive with my salary which is 1.2 million pounds i don't need the one point uh, the one million bonus on top of that yeah mark little i mean doesn't it really just come down to a, a moral question here i mean jeremy brown is right you know he is earning in in three days what a, what a soldier in afghanistan is earning in a year other bank chiefs have waived it because they just think it's it's an unpalatable reality at the moment you can't take this sort of money 
Yeah, he may decide to do that for public relations reasons. He's clearly earning enormously more than the average salary. By my calculation, he's earning a bit less than the average Premier League footballer. And I would say that in terms of the social usefulness of his function, I'm rather more concerned about his performance as a taxpayer over the next uh, few years than I am concerned about the performance of somebody who plays for Manchester United. The problem is... The thing is, I suppose the taxpayers don't own Manchester United, do we? No, of course, but it's in our interest as taxpayers to make sure that RBS is put in a fit state to float back into the private sector. We don't want the taxpayer and the government holding 80% of the shares. We want this to be privatised again. And the key task that Stephen Hester is undertaking is to try and make sure that when it is floated back, that share price is high. Now, uh, I think that the market rate he's being paid, it is a colossal salary, but the idea that you could get somebody to do this highly complex and detailed task for a sort of standard average um, wage in this country is laughable. The consequences of handing over RBS to the people occupying the tents outside of St Paul's Cathedral would be a collapse in its share price. And we as taxpayers want the highest share price that we can possibly get. And that means paying the market rate for people who do this highly complex Sorry, and important come, come job. And that. I wish him every success. Well, I, I would I definitely disagree with that because you're talking about uh, a private company, even though I have to, to, to repeat again that this is not a private company. Uh, when, when the government has, when the government has uh, uh, convinced uh, public servants to, uh, to accept the pay freeze and when they have convinced the public servants to pay increase, to, to increase the pension contributions uh, around the country, don't we need the best public servants to run the country as well? Well, hang on. The, 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 the problem there is when the decision was taken to nationalise this bank, they could have decided if they wanted to, that they were going to run it entirely out of the Treasury, that some civil servant or bureaucrat in the Treasury would make all of the decisions. That was not the decision made by the last government, so it still has a substantial number of aspects of a private company, uh, despite the fact that uh, a large proportion of the shares are owned by the state. We could have gone down a different route. Gordon Brown's government decided to go down this particular route. Contracts were entered into. Um, post the crash with these people about what they had to do, what performances they had to uh, hit, what targets they had to hit in order to get certain levels of remuneration. And I don't know. I'm not on the remuneration committee. I haven't devised these targets, but there is a process in place by which they are devised. We chose, well, the last government chose this structure for RBS. Yeah. What we want to see is it back in the private sector. That's a highly complex thing to do. And uh, Stephen Hester should be remunerated and over the long term for delivering that. Yeah, and that. Van Limen, I mean, it seems a huge amount of money for us, but £1.2 million as your base salary in the city is not huge. Well, it is actually, um, because it's not just the city now. It is a, it is a public institution. And uh, if, no, uh, if Mr. Hester is threatening, get a, if threatening, threatening that he can find a better though. job and do it better, then he's free to do that. But uh, I'm well, sure he, he someone else can be found. Someone, someone else was, can do his job. He was, and he was earning much more in previous jobs. Well, but he hasn't been successful so far, and we, we, cannot, you know, we cannot ignore that. He hasn't been successful. And if he wants to move to Asia to, to make more money, he's free to do that. But we want to live in Europe. Well, he clearly, he clearly is free to do that. One yes. of the concerns I understand is that one of the concerns is that they were worried that they were going to lose him at RBS. Clearly, he's not chained to this job. He can move at any particular time he wants. And if his salary is uh, forced down to a level where he thinks he can do a lot better elsewhere, and I think most experts believe he could earn a lot more elsewhere, he could leave. Well, he's so free, some he's, of this is a judgment free to do that. of his Wait ability. Okay, okay. Oh, I know, I, do, you know, do you know, this is going to go, this is going to run and run. Uh, we're going to have to draw a line under this, I think. Uh, Mark Littlewood uh, from the Institute of Economic Affairs and uh, Spiro van Limmen, thank you both thank very you. much.